our next presenter is uh, Marc Antoine Berube. And after a standout pitching career with the University of Pittsburgh, Mark was selected by the Oakland A's in the 2015 MLB draft, where he spent three seasons with the organization. After a stint with the Quebec Capitals in his native Quebec, Mark shifted his efforts towards working with some of the top amateur players in Quebec through the ABC uh, program, where he is currently the director of performance. So baseball today, uh, lots of information, analytics, all that type of thing. It's crept its way into, into the amateur game. Um, and it's certainly something that is, is definitely part of our game right now and finding different ways to measure athletes, track their improvement, their success. Um, that's ultimately going to lead to, to developing better baseball players. So it's an evolving world. There's lots of change, lots of new type of things uh, that organizations and, and teams can use. So um, we're, that's why we brought Mark on today to give our audience some insight into how the ABC program uses technology with their athletes. And we're, I think there's a lot of people on here today that are, are really interested in hearing what, uh, what Mark has to say. So welcome, Mark, and uh, we certainly look forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thanks for the intro, Adam. All right, so we get things going. All right, here we go. So technology and baseball, this is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, titled this presentation, Technology Surfing the Wave. Uh, so why surfing the waves? Because I feel like uh, it's a, it, technology is just a big wave coming at us. So whether, whether uh, we like it or not, the wave is coming. So I feel like uh, there are two ways that, that we can look at things. It's either, okay, the wave is coming, or nah, it's not that big of a wave, or whatever, I'll handle it. Or we can just say, hmm, there's a big wave coming, I'd rather get prepared and try to surf that wave. So that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, to me, what's going to be important is to uh, give you some information to just get ready to uh, surf that wave that is coming to you, because honestly, in my, uh, my uh, own opinion, that wave is coming, so you just got to get ready. So brief outline of uh, what we're going to cover today. So is tech really our friend? Now you're wondering, oh, that guy is going to talk about technology. He's already question, uh, questioning if technology is our friend. Yeah, first question. Um, then we're going to talk about Blast Motion, uh, Rob Soto. We're going to talk about uh, briefly about uh, technology off the field. And then we're going to talk about other uh, types of technology that are uh, possibly available. So. First things first, what is technology? So according to Oxford Dictionary, it is scientific knowledge used in practical ways in industry, for example, in designing new technology, uh, new machines, I'm sorry, I'm trying to move this up, all right. So in our baseball world, so uh, what, was the, what were those machines? So as you guys watch baseball, you can see, uh, like in the last couple of years, that was uh, pitch effects and stat cast that were giving us a bunch of information about the exit velocity, the projected home run dis distance, as you can see uh, in the picture on the right uh, with Freddie Freeman, fellow Canadian. So what we can say is that this era of pitch effects and stat cast really triggered uh, that wave of technology where there's a whole bunch of numbers getting thrown at us and like, all right, so what is this? Why does this happen? A whole bunch of questions and a whole bunch of way of looking at the game and comparing players uh, between them with different metrics. So I think it, it was a big boom within the, the baseball world because honestly, we're pretty, uh, you know, we're pretty, keeping things the way that we liked them but now it, it changed a lot of things and now like it's really exponential like from the time that I was playing from now like it's just it's crazy how things evolved the thing with anything that uh, uh, that we design like in technology so the big thing with any product is really is it solving a problem so with us with technology and baseball so what problem is technology solving that's really the main question before we get ahead of things the first question that I like to ask before I say what is the problem that it's trying to solve is why do we play baseball? So if we had a long amount of time, then I would ask you guys, why do we play baseball and we would exchange. But now what we're going to do is that I'll just give you my, uh, my little insight on why do we play baseball? So I think 
most of the answers that we get usually when I ask that question is uh, we play baseball because it's fun because we like it, right? It makes sense. Nobody's going to really do something that they don't enjoy. So we play baseball fundamentally because it is fun. We've got to keep it fun. Uh, one thing that we yeah, I reverse engineer that process on what is fun and what makes baseball fun usually, well, people like winning. So I like winning more than losing. And what we got to keep in mind is that we are trying to win a baseball game at some point. Now, you'll see later, I'll bring things into context. But at the end of the day, you're trying to win a ball game. How do you win a ball game? Well, it's pretty simple. You score more runs than the other, the other team, and then you win a game. How do you score more runs? Well, you got to be better than the other team tactically. And to uh, have a bigger impact in your tactics, then you should probably be better physically or technically than your opponent. Because if you're better physically and technically, then you have a bigger impact on your tactics. And then you score more runs, then you win a game and it's fun. And then the more, the more it's fun, then the more you want to keep doing it. Your motivation increases, you're trying to get better. So there's a big circle that happens in there. That's a big, messy slide, right? So this one is big big and messy, but it's not that complicated. I really keep it simple, you see, right? So I just reverse engineer that we said, I think this is why we probably play baseball and we gotta keep this in mind. So if we say that the thing, if we wanna keep things fun, it goes down to getting our players better physically or technically, let's say tactically too, but better physically and, and technically, what that really means is better player development. So to me, the problem that technology is solving is improving player development. If we can use technology to improve our players, technically it's going to have us win more games and then winning is fun. Within that player development, what, really need, we, what we really need to understand is that we got to individualize the process. So this is a big, like, complicated graph that is just like, we don't need to look at it for now. I'll just read a little quote, uh, quote from that study that is really interesting to me. So the assumption of convergence in behavior also disregards that the majority of tasks may be solved in a number of ways. For this reason, it is not necessary that individuals must converge to the same solution, learn the same pattern, even in similar task conditions. So what this really is saying is that, okay, so we have a task that we got to solve. And regardless that the task, like if the task is the same, we, we say like, okay, solve this task. Two different people are going to come up with two different solutions to solve that task. There's no solution that is better uh, than the other one. It's just like, it's dependent on context. And that is what that slide is really saying. So we have an environment that is acting on the agent or the person. That person is acting on the environment and then that loop is being closed. So what really we're trying to say here is that, okay, there is technology. We're trying to help our players. Technology techno is going to give us numbers. All those numbers really don't matter without the context. Numbers are just numbers. And if we look, we got to look at the individual, the environment, and the, ta and the task that we're trying to solve in order to uh, implement technology and make an intervention. Thing is, why should we not use technology? I said before, okay, so there's technology. Yeah, 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 it's great. But there's also some things that we got to keep in mind before we use it. The relative cost, so it could be pretty expensive. But my question is, what is its value? Because honestly, like the price is one thing, but the return on investments is really what we got to look at. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The biggest thing here for me is really the overflow of information. And that is, that could be summed up with two nice quotes that I really like. So to obtain knowledge, add things every day. To attain wisdom, subtract things every day. So it's honestly pretty easy to just add a bunch of information and add technology to the way that we do things. But it's much harder to just like, okay, so there's a whole bunch of things there and we got to just put things on the side and then focus on what really matters. And honestly, that's really one thing that we got to keep in mind before we use technology or when we use it. The other thing is, I hope you guys saw Bull Durham. And in that movie, you probably remember that uh, the coach saying, it's a simple game. You throw the ball, you hit the ball, and you catch the ball. So it's important to keep the game simple. Like players are always going to complicate the game. And if we add a whole bunch of information, now it's just complicated. It's just adding complexity to the stuff and we got to keep the game simple. Feedback dependency in any like uh, motor learning uh, study that you could read, feedback dependency is decreasing performance long-term. So dependence on feedback from technology is not something that we want. 
So we got to keep this in mind before we use it. Uh, technology is not as worth it if not using conjunction with an intervention system. So as I said before, you can have a whole bunch of numbers, but if you don't know how to use it within a system, then those numbers are pretty much useless because they all depend on the context and where you use them. Uh, last, I think it's really the most important thing there is that the basics are still good. Like it goes the same direction as the, the, the fact that it's a simple game, you gotta keep it simple. Can't put on the icing until you bake the cake. So people want to get to do those crazy things, but Honestly, like there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do before you add all that technology within your player development. There are some fundamentals. There are some basics that could be used, and especially like right now, like the everyone has a phone and everyone has a radar. Radars are getting cheaper. So it's a radar and a phone and you're always going to, you're never going to go wrong. With this. But okay, you flip this around. Why should we not use tech? Like there's not, not only some bad things, it could be pretty useful too. So why should we use technology? It allows us to see what we cannot see. So when we make an intervention, we don't really want to base our interventions on something that is, ah, I think this. So it's going to happen. There's a part art to coaching, but honestly, like it's much better to make an intervention based on something that we know like is a fact. So by seeing what we cannot see, like we can understand better on what, how, how our players are solving one task. And then we can, uh, we can make an intervention based on facts and not guessing. Uh, improving feedback is important because people learn with feedback with feel I always say that okay if you want to get better at baseball you gotta have feel yes so feel is getting developed by sensory information people learn things differently and by having technology it's just a different type of feedback that is getting at us and it might help someone learn something better it's like, oh now i see it now i understand what i was doing what we're trying to do with performance, quantifying change is something that we are after if you want to track performance. Guiding self-discovery, so know thyself is the big sentence that we use at the ABC that is just like, you got to know who you are. As I said, there's the environment, there's the task, and then there's the individual. As an individual, you got to know who you are in order to make a good decision. Intrinsic indicators of performance. So that's going to be like to compare yourself within yourself, regardless of the results. Sometimes you can uh, look at the way you do things because, you know, sometimes bad stuff happens on the field and you can't look at this. You got to look at the process. And with those numbers, you can have your own process. And I talked about the price earlier, but honestly, technology is more affordable than any gold standard measurements that you can have. So let's say you want to use technology, you'd use uh, motion capture lab, but uh, it's, it's not affordable for someone, but technology uh, is getting more and more uh, user friendly uh, nowadays. All right, so before we set the, the stage now, we can go with uh, what we're really after here. So describing useful technology. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is blast motion. So what is this thing? Blast motion is an inertial measurement unit that you put at the end of the baseball bat. So what you do with this is you connect the little inertial measurement unit. So connect the blast to your phone. There's an app in your phone. You connect it to your, your bat. What you do is that you slam the bat into the ground. It wakes up the blast and then you're ready to go. Only thing you got to do is sync it to the phone and then you're ready to swing. What is it going to do when you swing? It's going to give you a whole bunch of numbers. So now what you see here is that we are, uh, we are comparing a whole bunch of numbers. Now you can see some numbers there, but honestly, like within the app, you have so many things that you can look at. So the, there's an algorithm that is coming from your bed that is just like, there's a whole bunch of calculations and you can pick and choose within the app what you want to look at with your player. So that's a pretty interesting thing. Um, if, we, if we go and look at how it does it, so the initial measurement unit is at the end of the bat. So when you start to swing, so it's gonna start to record once you accelerate the bat. And then at the point of contact, when the ball is hitting the bat, uh, it's reverse engineering what happened and then it's giving you those numbers. So there are plenty of numbers. As I said before, there's an overflow of information and you got to pick and choose what you want to look at, and which order, depending on who your player is and what you want him to do. So you can get lost in there, but honestly, like that's why we got to look at a couple of things first and like, okay, so what am I trying to do with my player? Basically, to me, there are two uh, important things that we got to look at. So first, bat speed. So why is bat speed important? Well, if you increase bat speed, that will technically it would uh, increase the projectile center of mass, velocity, magnitude, and as a result, 
traveling distance. Okay, so fancy sentence to just say that if you swing the bat faster, when you hit the ball square, it should the distance uh, should increase. And when distance increase, well, usually uh, great stuff happens performance-wise. Well, the only thing that is uh, not good with bat speed is just like it's a measurement that is not really uh, correlated with the exit velocity from the bat, right? So what we look for is the exit velocity, but you can have bats, good bat speed and bad exit velocity because it's a matter of the attack angle and how you hit the ball square. So I don't know if you guys read Ted Williams' book about hitting, but it's like you got two round objects and you got to hit it square. So how do you hit it square? You got to match the plane. So when you're matching the plane is with the attack angle. So if we know that the ball is coming down by about like between zero and 10 degrees, usually it's coming down to the hair between zero and 10. So what we want to do as hitters is to match the plane. So technically like the peak exit velocity from the hitters is between zero and 10 degrees. So if you get a hitter that is having a negative angle, so he's, attack he's attacking at negative 10 and the ball is coming at negative 10 as well, well, you're not matching the plane, so you can have great bat speed, but if you're not hitting the ball square, it's not going to go as far regardless of that. So uh, sometimes you can say, I think you're doing this, but with the blast, what's, what is great is just like, look at you. You have great bat speed. Your exit velo is not really good. Why is it not good? That's because your attack angle is bad. And then if you change the attack angle, when if you see like, oh, look, your exit velocity increased by... Uh, five miles an hour. Why is that? Well, look at this. Your attack angle went from negative five to plus five and then exit velocity improved. So it's a really, really great tool, I think, to uh, make, uh, make changes with hitters. Um, what can it do for us? So as I said, there's a whole bunch of things that can happen. Uh, it can really help us understand the kinematics of the swing. So it's really like the motion of the bat. Uh, just gives you numbers about acceleration and velocity. Um, Performance-wise, as I said, uh, it's good to know when one performs at his best. So if someone is getting uh, better outcomes on the field and say, oh, look, why are you getting better outcomes on the field? Well, maybe that's because your attack angle changed. And if you have the tools to say that to your player, then that's how you can say well, you are at performing at your best when you are doing this and you need to have technology and data to get uh, those results. Monitoring is really something that is uh, good for us too. So we can look at if bat speed is uh, decreasing. So if bat speed is decreasing, that could be an indicator of fatigue. And it's something that we're going to want to know in uh, the motor learning skill acquisition. Fatigue is really something that we don't want to go uh, after. And if you want performance, no, not trying to be fatigued too, right? Um, Tracking wise is good to have swing counts. So blast is really counting as many like balls that you hit is recording it within the app. So with people that are working at distance uh, during the pandemic, it was something that was pretty useful. Um, giving players confidence as I said, like some bad stuff can happen on the field, like result, result wise, but you can have uh, intrinsic performance statistics that can be like, maybe this wasn't good on the field, but if you keep doing what you're doing, like we believe that some good stuff is going to happen. So it's, it's focusing on the process instead of the result. And in player development is something that we're going to focus on a lot. It's also a quick setup and a user-friendly app. Honestly, it takes a minute to set it up or less. So it's, it's a very good, uh, very good uh, technology, good device. Now, what's important with this is to systematize the way that we analyze the data. And I like to see things as McDonald's. Like, so why is McDonald's pretty important? Like there's a good system. Wherever you go, McDonald's, McDonald's, they have a process and they give good results. Now, it's not always the same thing in McDonald's. So if you go in Texas or if you go in Montreal, it's going to be a different menu because it's a different context. As I said earlier, it all depends on context, right? Um, Thing with this is that when you do in your process, it's about gathering the information, analyzing the information and implementing it. So you gather the data, get sufficient data, you analyze it. Is my player successful or not? Because if, if he is successful, maybe you uh, don't try to fix it if it's not broken. If he's not successful, then why is he not successful? And then you make a change, or maybe you don't. And the last thing is how do I present information? So you present information uh, visually. Some people want to know what is happening. Some people just want to have drills that are based on motor learning where you're going to disguise the information and keep things more simple. Because as I said, it's a simple game. You've got to keep it simple. The other technology that we use is uh, 
is Rapsodo. So what is Rapsodo? So it's an easy to use portable baseball pitch tracker designed to help create the most effective pitch arsenal using real-time analytics. So again, gives you a bunch of numbers. Rapsodo, what does it do? It takes a bunch of quick pictures and it's making an, est an estimated guess of where the ball is gonna go based on a whole bunch of different numbers. So you have the velocity there, you have the spin direction, spin axis, spin efficiency, a whole bunch of numbers again that is going to give you uh, that are going to give you the vertical break here. So vertical break and horizontal break, what is that? That's a displacement. Uh, that's a displacement of the ball. So that's a displacement that is interesting us. And then this is how it happens. What can that do for us? Honestly, it's doing the same thing as the as the blast. But the only thing that is different that is going to help us create a pitch design. So creating an arsenal with Rapsodo is very, very, uh, it's a very good tool. And then it's also an objective measurement that it's a plus curveball. Yeah, it's a plus curveball. But it's also, you can say, as, as in a scout scale, you can say, oh, it's a 70. OK, it's a 70. And then you can also say it's a vertical break, negative vertical break. Oh, that is something that is really objective and is going to help us to quantify how good someone else is. Same process there, gather information, analyze it, implement it. So it's always a matter of context, how you, how you present the information, regardless of the numbers that you get. You can't use numbers without context, and that's really what you're going to have to do there. I don't know what I'm doing on time. So good? Yeah, um, maybe, another, maybe another minute, Mark, and then right. uh, I, I do want to get to one question. Um, Perfect. Obviously, this is, there, there's a lot of info here, so I just want to make sure we get to one question. You're, you're doing a great job explaining it. So yeah, I'll try anyway. There's a lot of information I said. It's overwhelming. But what we can say, like, we'll just give all of this. What we can say is that there's stuff on the field that we can use. There's also technology off the field. Like, for us, we use Forkplace and Google Forms to monitor stuff. It's a big world. And as I said, like, there's a whole bunch of things there, like Intertronic, Coach's Eye, and Pitch AI, KVS, Pitch Logic, Pulse. Like, it's crazy. The whole bunch of information that we can have. And then, honestly, as you saw, like, I didn't have enough time to explain all of this. And I try to keep it simple. But I guess maybe it wasn't. But anyway, so whole bunch of things maybe like you can look it up do your research technology is cool and i hope like i tried to help you surf that wave it's a big wave as you saw i try to do my best in 20 minutes maybe it wasn't enough but hopefully uh, you guys learn and uh maybe you got a little like a trigger so like oh maybe i need to get a little more involved with this and i hope you enjoy no no thank you uh thank you very much mark i mean you did a great job um certainly this is a new world for a lot of people especially in, in amateur baseball, it's, it's been ingrained in the professional side for quite some time now, but it's constantly evolving and changing, as you mentioned. And I think a great tool for people to uh, take note of here as you, you post on your last slide is, is your Instagram page, because you've, I've, I've seen it before, you've put some great content out there and provide some context around it. So uh, folks, if you're on Instagram, if you're not, jump on and, and make sure you follow Mark. Um, and I think at the same time, Mark, if, if people have questions, they can, uh, they can reach out to you as well uh, via email. But there was one question, and this is from, from Sapna, and, and Sapna is asking, does blast motion track the type of pitch that is thrown? Uh, no, it doesn't. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So that's why I said it's context. So let's say you flip balls like from a angle that is like from all overhand and underhand, like it's going to give you a different attack angle uh, when you swing. So you got to keep this in mind when you use your blast. Usually you would try to keep it overhand because if you have underhand, your attack angle is going to be different. It's going to screw your numbers unless you restart it. So um, yeah, so it just looks at what you do with the bat. It doesn't matter like where the bat is, the ball is coming from. It's really intrinsic measure. Like it doesn't look at the bat, at the ball. Sorry. Awesome. And just another comment was uh, someone mentioning how insightful and informative your presentation was. So we really appreciate you uh, taking the time, Mark. We we probably should have booked uh, some extra some extra minutes for you, but I mean you packed a lot into. Uh, into a short period of time. So we're certainly very appreciative. Again, folks, please follow Mark on Instagram or feel free to reach out if you have some questions because obviously from your knowledge base, Mark, um, this is something that you're passionate about and you're, you're really uh, educated with and you've, uh, you've done a great job um, 
explaining that to our audience tonight. So thank you so much. And we certainly wish you the best with the uh, ABC program. Keep going. Yeah, thank you.